so let's go back for a moment because I was, uh, you know, doing my homework, knowing that I was going to talk to you today. And I'm a big Alice Cooper fan, but it, it dawned on me that I don't know that I realized or I had forgotten that you guys put out a string of five classic albums between 71 and 73. That's like basically two and a half years. You put out five albums that are considered classics. Love it to death, killer schools out, billion dollar babies and muscle of love. Who can say that? Now I know uh, that back in those days, bands did. It wasn't unusual for bands that to put out a couple records a year. Out. Yeah, that's kind but, of. But but I will say I don't know that anybody, at least in my catalog. Of course, I'm a hard rock guy, but yeah. um, you put out five albums, consecutive albums that are considered classics and you can argue that kiss put out albums at the same pace black sabbath at the same pace aerosmith at the same pace but really the first those records didn't really they weren't successes out of the box and i think that your five albums uh beginning with love it to death are landmark records and i can't believe that you were able to put them out so quickly while you're touring in between tell us about the pace as far as the writing and the touring and how you're cranking these things out. I know you had youth on your side at that time. <laughs> it was a crazy work ethic too. I That's mean, just I, nuts. I, I, well, was, well, you, 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 well, first of all, I want to clarify. Yes, classics, but I also like to say platinum as well. But yes. um, <laughs> there was, hey, there was I'm bragging there, if it's true. <laughs> there was there was a there was that element that inspired us too. But um, no. It, it, and and I I love to talk about this and I mean I, there's two things that we don't talk about too much is Dennis and Mia's rhythm section and the work ethic of the band and that's what I loved about the band when I when I joined them I knew how hard they worked and they were all writing their songs I said Holy Grail that I was with went to San Francisco we're still doing cover material and great songs but cover material but by that time. The Naz, when they left Phoenix, they were doing all the original, all original stuff. And so when I ended up living with them after my band broke up in Santa Monica, uh, and John, their drummer, moved back to Phoenix, and they asked me to join the band. And I, you know, I mean, because Glenn and I were really close friends. I was close with Michael too, but Glenn and I both from Akron, Ohio. But as you said, and I can't stress that enough, the work ethic of the band and and my work ethic just meshed because it's like nothing was going to stop us. Every single day we were rehearsing, we were traveling, we were playing, or we were recording every single day, 24 seven. That's why we, when we finally in 1974 decided to take the year off, uh, it, it, was, it was well worth it to, to do it rest wise. Unfortunately, the band didn't get back together, but, the songs were coming out like crazy. And I also want to point out another cool thing. Somebody had just done a great review about, uh, about the Killer album and, and noticing the fact they called it the music in the band was totally organic. And I thought, man, that is a great way to put it because no corporate entity ever told the band Alice Cooper what to do. Bob came in and he helped mold our songs and uh, added some wonderful arrangements, sweetening, like with I Love the Dead with the orchestration and, and the other songs too. But Michael, uh, all the songwriting changed. Because, you know, he said, well, between Easy Action and Pretty's for You, uh, Easy Action and Love of the Death, what happened? It's a natural evolution. I mean, look at all the Beatles albums, how they changed over time from one album to another. As a songwriter, you know, we were just, you know, we were just, start, you know, once we had the freedom to do it, don't even think about it. The songs were just flowing. And luckily, we had management that that would keep up with us and, you know, keep the gigs coming. We're writing songs on the road. Under I'm my wheels on killer. When, was it Shep Gordon that came in at a certain time that sort of like. Yeah, Shep came, he, Shep came in right uh, in 60, uh, 68. Perfect when timing. Was that, when Zappa wanted to, uh, wanted to, well, it's an accident, but it's not an accident. Oh. Zappa wanted to sign us, but we didn't want Zappa, we didn't want Herbie Cohen and Frank to manage the band. Herbie Cohen's Frank's manager. We knew that the one thing that, in all the very successful bands coming out of England, every band 
the Beatles had their manager. The Stones had their manager. Bob Dylan had their man. All, all the big bands had their own manager that they were number one with. And that's what we wanted. In the meantime, Cindy, my sister, who was Dennis Dunaway's uh, wife, yeah. she worked at a, uh, at a boutique in Hollywood. And these guys from New York, these hip looking guys come in a couple of times. Cindy finally introduces herself, talks to him and asks them, we know what they did for a living. And they said, we're, we're from New York and we're, we're, uh, we're here to find a band to manage. She goes, well, my brother Neil's in a band called Alice Cooper and Frank Zappa wants to record them. And that's how it started. Wow. It was my sister, the man, it wasn't Janis Joplin, Jimmy Henry. Those are stories that I think that the truth is always weirder than anything else. And the fact that they came into that store where Cindy worked, she lived in Dallas at the time. Uh, she and my mom moved from Phoenix to Dallas. And Cindy wanted to be, we we're very, always very close. There's only about 18 months between us. So she moved to, to, uh, to L.A. so we could be close. We lived in Topanga Canyon. And that's what happened. Frank, uh, Shep had a partner, Joe Greenberg. So Shep Gordon and Joe Greenberg came to see us. And boom, that was, that was the next step. We had the man, we had the record company. Now we needed managers, our own managers to manage Alice Cooper. And then the next step after easy action, after the first two albums was to finally get our own producer. And that was Bob Ezrin. So all of that, along with the work ethic, we, we were really a machine by that time. Oh, yeah. And, and when we made up, when we, you know, came up with the name Alice Cooper, which did come up from Ouija board, uh, I was there that night. And um, it did, they, uh, didn't. No, it did. Did no, okay. I, that's what I thought. Because yeah. that same story happened to me as well as to Vince, but it didn't say Alice for me. It was another name, but it's, that's another story. But uh, so once we were rolling, it was a machine. I mean, you know, Michael was writing songs, and Michael and I would go down in the barn in Pontiac, and uh, that's where we worked out "Love Us to Death" and "Killer," and he come up with these. Songs, and I'm just like, you know, because first of all, he, you know, he's he's got him. He's got the melody and. And he'll sit down and, he's play, and he starts playing Caught in a Dream. I go, holy shit. Great. This song just got better and better. You know, it drives me nervous. I go, this is great for flams. And, and I mean, the, you know, they just wrote themselves. It was all just happening. And, and uh, you know, Bob and Jack Richardson came in and, and they just, you know, tweaked everything a little bit. And, and, and then wow. before... Before long, we were back over the studio and recording the Killer album. Wow, so, uh, and, and then by then we, you know, we were doing well enough that we wanted to be close to to Shep and Joe, our managers in New York, and we wanted to move to New York to Westchester. But they said, no, no, Connecticut has no income tax. You guys are moving to Greenwich, Connecticut. So that's when we got wow. the man that we got it there. It was all for business, not because we wanted to come to Connecticut. But of course, now they have an income tax naturally. Wow. But at that time, they did not. That's why we ended up in Greenwich. 